my fellow explorers of Pioneer, I come to you today with another kind of weird brew of a deck. This is Rakdos Discard. And uh, the reason that I'm playing this deck is because it has one of my favorite cards of all time in it. Waste not. And are you tired of Grease Fang? Are you tired of Parhelion coming out from the graveyard? Are you tired of your opponent cycling through their hand using blood, using all these great drawn discard spells in red and white and black and blue? Well, guess what? We're gonna punish our opponents for playing those cards because we make use of everything. We are the lords of recycling with Waste Not. Waste Not is a card that was actually designed as part of a community exercise for Magic the Gathering way back when. And I didn't even realize it was Pioneer Legal until like a week and a half, two weeks ago, which you might've actually seen in another video of mine. And yes, my response to it was, oh my God, I can play Waste Not here. Oh my God, I can play Waste Not here. Yes, I can play Waste Not here. Waste Not. Very great card that gives you a lot of value for your opponent's discarding. So we're gonna use some of the best ways to make our opponents discard, like Croxa. You know Croxa, big scary titan, makes your opponent lose life if they discard a land or can't discard at all. You know who else bleeds people out if they can't discard? Liliana, Waker of the Dead. Doubles his removal, love to see her. This doubles as a big scary beater. And it's great fodder for Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So Fable of the Mirror Breaker, you usually wanna play with cards that have enter the battlefield or leave the battlefield, like Elderfang Disciple and Acquisitions Expert. This deck has a nasty little combo, which is if you have one of these two little discard dorks up and you have a Reflection of Kiki Jiki, you can activate Reflection of Kiki Jiki on your opponent's draw step to make them discard. Unless they have something that they can play or use at instant speed, you can sometimes lock your opponents out, and if you have a waste not out at the same time, you can generate way more value. This being a deck that's in Explorer, and we're in black, we're also running Fatal Pushes and Thoughtseize. We're also running two Meat Hook Massacres. Listen, I don't make the rules, but it does make sense. One of those is a discard card. Uh, Meat Hook Massacre is a great way to get ahead, stay ahead. And we're also running a little bit of graveyard hate because we're letting our opponents put stuff into their graveyards. So we gotta be able to take out those things. Um, the numbers of unlicensed hurts and go blank versus something like say Inscription of Ruin are very much up to what you are matching up against in the queue. I haven't been running into that much Grease Fang. So I went down on my hearses and go blanks but I went up on Invoke Despair because I was running into a lot of blue-white control where they're playing Planeswalkers. And you might notice that the rest of the cards in this deck don't do much about Planeswalkers, which is a darn shame because I personally think that Fatal Push should hit Planeswalkers. If I push Jace down a flight of stairs, he should be injured by it. Okay? It's just, it's just my opinion, man. All right, so we're gonna take this into the queue and do some discard shenanigans. All right, I've got a couple fatal pushes and a thought seize. This is a really nice early start for us, even though we don't have like a lot of value being generated until we have Liliana. We can still control the board, but I noticed my opponent's playing Gigantha, which typically means, and not always, typically means that they're playing, well, Sacrifice. Jund Sacrifice is the main thing I see with Gigantha in this queue. I actually have a deck with Gigantha. It's four color humans. Don't question it, it's fine, it's normal. Okay, it's normal. Four Colored Humans is a normal deck. I might make a video with it sometime. Oh, Sacred Foundry. Could you perhaps be Four Colored Humans? <laughs> no, I don't think they are. I'm gonna check out their hand because I don't know what they are. I don't know what they're doing. And is it Feather? Or Featherless Feather? It appears to be a Featherless Feather deck. It's got three great creatures here. Um, Reckless Rage would be able to take out my creatures. And uh, these are all great cards, but I'm going to drop the Legionnaire because it is fast and furious and uh, everything else is a little bit slower and thus exquisitely pushable. Hmm. Let's go ahead and get out a second Black Source. And I will let them target their Virtuoso if they would like to connive. They can even put the plus one plus one counters on it. But then I want to blast those nerds straight off the battlefield by pushing them down off the side of a building and into our hearts. The reason why I'm letting the connive complete is because they are discouraged from discarding lands because they want this to get bigger 
And thus, they're gonna be more likely to discard spells. And, um, you know what? Die. Dang, that feels good. Cool. Uh, Obnixilus, I usually would really like to casualty him. Um, whoops, I clicked on the wrong side there. But in lieu of having a creature out, we're just gonna make a creature. Obby Nobby, make a devil. Okay, he's having like three voice lines play at once. Oof, okay, so 10th District Legionnaire, she's gonna get buffed up. They're gonna get to scry too. And I'm probably going to chump block with the devil. Oh, hey, Scraps. The kitty cat's just walking around. Being a sweet little girl. Hopefully I can get them to run out of steam, though. That's, uh... Trickier. Would be great to do. Oh, now that is nice. So right now I only have three cards in the graveyard. Which means that Liliana won't be able to kill the 10th District Legionnaire. That's a darn shame. So I'm not going to be playing Liliana this turn. Then I'm just gonna thought seize my opponent. Okay, they have a land in hand. I'm going to play Blood Crypt out. I essentially paid two life for nothing here. Opnixilis going into the graveyard will give me Liliana able to kill this, assuming this isn't a spell, which I think if it were, unless it's like Reckless Rage, it would have used it. But I think Invoke the Spare might be a better pick for me. I think with the chances of them having Something fast and furious here. I'm just gonna go for it. Something, 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 die. The deck my opponent's playing, by the way, is actually one of my favorite types of decks. Uh, I have my own version of it. I call it Featherless Feather, but with some feather. And my version, I just kept adding more cards in because I loved so many different cards in my build that I ended up making it into a deck with Yorian. Sometimes you just add 20 extra cards because you can and you want to. All right, they, I like having the extra 20 cards. Makes me feel better about myself. All right, now I'm going to cause trouble because that's what I do. And we're going to invoke despair. We're gonna play Danganronpa over here. Ooh, Kroxa in the graveyard. That sounds good to me. So I'm actually going to discard my Kroxa. Love it. Throw this down. And we have enough to escape Kroxa next turn. Hi. Got a way to kill her? Nope. We win. The War of Value adds up to us being victorious. I like that my opponent is, apparently, a Phyrexian raccoon. As somebody who really vibes with raccoons... Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what a Phyrexian raccoon would be like doing day to day. I mean, eating garbage, scrounging, being generally horrifying. Now, I don't trust like this. My opponent has a Kahira as a companion and just played a blue-white land. I don't think they have a single creature in their deck. Let's find out. Wow, all of it's terrible. Die, Narset. Now, this does mean, unfortunately, that my Fatal Push is not going to get a lot of value. I might be able to push a Shark in the future. <laughs> Maybe get to hit Kahira herself. Alright, we're going to crack this. And get... Actually, I think Black Mana is fine here. I already have some red off Haunted Ridge. And I like the idea of playing Waste Not here. If I can get this to land against them, and I did have mana up to dodge a, um, a sensor, that would have been great for me. Unfortunately, counter spells exist. Which is honestly criminal. Why are counter spells? Now, this is not a target that's worth hitting with Where's Grandpa? <laughs> Just gonna have to hope that I get Fable of the Mirror Breaker so I can get rid of these fatal pushes. 
You want to draw one card? Do you have something else in hand, like a deluge? No, this is a Sphinx's revelation for one. I must attack their hand. Must commit crimes. All right, here comes the acquisitions expert. I want to look at two of the three cards in their hand, unless they manage to counter this. Do you say no? Do you say none? Do you disallow me from acquiring your thoughts? Oh no, they're actually just gonna draw cards in response. Show me a secrets. Secrets, please? I would love some secrets right now. Secrets, please. Thank you. Counter spells are illegal. Go directly to Gerald. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Or three life. All right, cool. Crux is in the graveyard. I can't escape him quite yet. Him and his many, many mouths. But that's okay. He's chilling. He's a threat. He's an eventuality. He's spooky scary. And my cat just rubbed on my foot. Baby girl. Oh, how I love you. Yes, you're a good cat. Yes, you're a good cat. Would you like to come and be on the video, Scraps? <gasps> Are you wanna be a YouTuber? I think my cat wants to be a YouTuber. Hold up. Baby, you wanna be a YouTuber? Come here. Who's my stinky YouTube cat? <gasps> it's her! Scraps is the stinky YouTube cat! She says, yay, I'm stinky YouTube cat! Going to sacrifice here to make this harder to counter because you can only counter one of these at a time, and they absorbed the copy or the original? Nope, they absorbed the original because it was gonna come in with uh, more trouble, more fubble, more blubble. We're gonna plus. I'm not they can choose to take two damage. Pleasure doing business. And they did. This is my cat, Scraps McGee, cat detective. She's a good little girl. She has her summer haircut right now and she's very fluffy. She was sick last week, but she's feeling better now because she's a good, good girl. She's a little nerve nerve wracked, I think, because uh, I'm moving, and moving is terrible, and she hates seeing all of her favorite toys going away. Oh no, my Croxa! Oh sweet, Fable to Mirror Breaker. Hell yeah, let's go! Now all I have to do is plus this, what, seven more times without them discarding? Now that sounds good. Yeah, who's a good kitty? You're a good kitty! Double the discard, double the fun! Get rid of these. Show me your secrets. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Okay, you thought that was the right move, huh? Let's punish them. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attack in. I'm gonna cast Meat Hook Massacre for zero. I know, we're getting tricksy over here. Liliana. Plus for the symmetrical discard. That's why I was emptying out my hands. And then Obnixilis for the guaranteed two damage. Ooh, an approach to the second sun. Yeah, gaining seven life and having an inevitable win con would have been great for you. That's why you can't have it. Scraps, look, I'm winning, sweetheart. He's purring. I don't think it's coming through on the uh, microphone, though. They can make a wan wan. They can have some fun fun. And I may as well lead with Go Blank. They have no card draw here, so I can at least exile their graveyard. I can plus Obnixilis. My coin I can plus Liliana. And I'm actually going to be going straight for face here. Now Teferi is terrifying, but I can't really make a ding in him or even change which ability he's, he's able to use. They're gonna be blocking anyway. That's, you know, go with a Meat Hook Massacre. And aren't you a sweet little girl? Scraps, you're a good one. 
Narset's minus two-ing to look for something. Trying to find answers here. Now, an absorb would be great for them if I needed to cast any other spells. I really want them to be in a position where they're forced to, like, counter their own spells. Ooh, okay. Okay. <laughs> this is great for me, because all we have to do is plus Liliana, and we win the game. Just a little bit of life at a time until they die. Scrap to my great gamer. Thank you. Mwah. Such a good cat right now. This is, she's being so good. Scraps loves YouTube video. Who's my little YouTube kitty? My little YouTube kitty. It's her. She's the YouTube kitty. The kitty gets her little scratchies. And the opening hand is a pretty nice one. Last game, my waist knot got countered. So hopefully I can get it to resolve so we can really go off this time. Oh, good kitty. She's blocking a lot of the screen for me, so... I'm, I'm kind of guessing what's in front of me. Now I'm going to guess this is going to be a Grease Fang deck. Or, wow, actually looks very mid-rangey, but it's still a Grease Fang deck. The hardest cards for me to deal with are Planeswalkers. So I'm actually going to hit the Planeswalker, even though like their next move is going to be Blood Tithe Harvester. This is one of those things where it's just, I know what I can deal with. And I know what I can't deal with. So we're going to land this Waste Knot because they actually have a discard engine of their own. And I have a whole bunch of them in hand. They swing in with the Blood Tithe Harvester. I take a whole bunch of damage. I feel kind of grody about it. And here comes the Elder Fang Disciple. I'm oh, just going to get push it, push it or stomped. But I do need to make them discard, and depending on what they discard, I'm either going to get a zombie, mana, or a card. Okay, card. Please land. Land. Yay! Land! Oh, look, Scraps, I got mana! Love mana! So this is great, because Elderfang Disciples, like, barely worth using a stomp on. But they're like, ugh, I guess... I guess I'll use my mana efficiently. Dang, Skippy, you will. Here comes Fable of the Mirror Breaker. That's tapping them out for the turn. They swing in for another three. I am getting kind of low. Oh, thank goodness I got to land. And I'm actually eyeing, like, Meat Hook Massacre here or Go Blank. Really mess with their hand. And, um... Do I think that they might drop a land? No, I'm just going to go for Meat Hook. Yeah, I'm gonna go for Meat Hook. I think it's dangerous not to, just because of how much damage this Blood Tithe Harvester gets in. Now, if they choose to discard next turn, I will still get the benefits of Waste Not. So, would you like to cycle through some cards? Thank you so much! I really appreciated that, Grootman. Here comes the Bone Crusher Giant, the BCG. And there goes their thoughts, their thinks. Be gone, knowledge. Oh, wow, it is actually a Grease Fang deck. I was like just wondering if this was some sort of strange mid range deck. I don't know why it is. Um, they still have one card in hand. And I don't think they should have one card in hand. So show me what that card is. Cool, Blood Tithe Harvester. Yeah, get out of here. And now I have a 2-2 zombie, so I can actually double block the Bone Crusher Giant. Thank you, Scraps. You were really, really nice to everybody in the video. Good cat. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So what I love is that I can be pretty cavalier about just, like, blocking with creatures, letting them die, because I have a Meat Hook Massacre out, and it is straight up value. This hurts them and heals me. Mmm. Mag freaking nificent. Now they don't have any cards in hand, so I can't make them discard anymore. Boo hoo, oh well, so sad, too bad. I'm gonna put Crux in the graveyard. And oh, what a fortuitous event! A creature left my control. That's a permanent. 
<laughs> go ahead and do that. And you know what? I'm actually thinking about hitting this other Karaksa Ooh, for the delicious, delicious value. Now let's do it. I can escape one of these next turn if I'd like. That's three damage. They're down to seven, six now life. Thank you, Meat Hook Massacre. I hate you, Meat Hook Massacre. Seriously, what a card. Oh, oh, you've chosen to discard. Thank you for the two mana. Do I do it? Oh, oh wait, they're doing another. Oh, four mana. Playing anything? Playing anything? No? Okay, that's great. Bye. And that's another win. Three in a row for Rakdos Discard. Trogdor is our next opponent. The Burninator. I have an okay opening hand. Um, I like having the Waste Knot. Just having Fatal Push and not having any Thought Seizes is a little tough, but I think we'll do our best. And we do have Kruxa, who's just, you know, a villainous evil friend. Uh, I am going to start, though, by cracking open this Fabled Passage. I know it's nice to save it for Fatal Push. But I want to make sure I can line up Kruxa and Waste Knot in whichever order I need. And also Fable of the Mirror Breaker. I don't have any other red sources right now. Hmm. Eator's Proving Ground. So when I saw the Zagoth Triome, I was thinking that this might actually be a... Sultai Fight Rigging deck, because I have run into those before. But with Zeator's Proving Ground and Ketri or Trump, this is five color Niv Mizzet, maybe? Okay, I'm gonna lead with just Croxa. Oh, you wouldn't deal with my waist now, would you? And during uh, this little segment right here, I did just get two subs. So thank you so much, the smart Alec and Messy Badger for subscribing and supporting the stream. Thank you. Oh, they dropped a Culligan's Command. This is a Niv Mizzet deck. Oh, look at all the colors. Omnaths cannot happen. No Omnaths. Oh, sweet. Got a zombie. Now you could use your Prismari command. You're gonna make a treasure and they're gonna cycle through some cards. My friend, you are, you would discard in front of my waste knot? You would discard in front of my waste knot? Oh, please, you treat me so well. Okay, so I get to draw a card and then I get to draw a card. Feels great. They have enough mana for Kotos, but like, oh no, what do you, you can exile the Croxa from my deck, ah. Uh. Anyway, I'm gonna make you discard. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to lead with Inscription of Ruin. I'm gonna make them discard two cards. If one of those is a land, then I can chain into Elder Fang Disciple or Acquisitions Expert. And one of them was a land. So let's see what your last card was. Tulsimir! We are in heaven right now. So I'm gonna hold this Fabled Passage in case I need to use it for Fatal Push, though I suspect I'm just gonna be cracking it, getting a red mana source, and using that for Kroxa. And indeed, that is what we do. Oh wait, I only have one basic red. That's fine, you know what? Just draw it. Just, just have it. Just always have it. Now, if I really wanted to escape Crux right here, I could just like fatal push my own creature. I know that's super greedy, but it sounds so fun. But I can wait a turn. I don't need it now. I'm gonna go for Fable of the Mirror Breaker and I'm going to play the other Croxa to just ding them for another three. You may have a rainbow of mana here. All triomes all the time. But I have an Elder Giant. So we just wrecked through the queue, absolutely demolished our opponents with this deck. So if you want to get it, of course, it's going to be in the video description. But if you want to see me play it live, you should come over to twitch.tv slash Amazonian, which is where this video was recorded. And 
where I play a lot of really fun decks in Explorer and Historic Brawl especially. So come on by! We're fun people, I promise, and we love Pioneer slash Explorer. Because who doesn't? Because who doesn't? Thanks for watching!